everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be taking three pieces of art, um, fine art, actually, uh, from history, and making them into a cartoon style. Uh, I thought this would be fun just because there seems to be a big rift between uh, sort of modern art and uh, cartoonists and stuff versus the old world, and I thought it would be fun to bring these two things together. Um, so my first pick, of course, was the Mona Lisa. Uh, it's the most well-known painting, I think, in the entire world. And I think um, people who don't know a lot about arts, when they think about paintings, um, one of the first ones they'll think of is the Mona Lisa. Um, so this painting didn't used to be so famous, though. Um, it's kind of interesting, just as an aside, that uh, the Mona Lisa used to be kind of a unknown painting until it was stolen in the middle of the night, and um, it was gone for a while, and people didn't even notice that it was gone at first because, like I said, it wasn't really that big of a deal at the time. But because it was stolen, it actually increased its value and gradually made it the most famous painting um, in the world, which I thought was really interesting. Another interesting fact about this painting and about paintings in this era is that the colors you see on it are probably not the colors that uh, it actually looks like when it was first painted. There's a yellow cast over a lot of paintings from this era, and that's actually because of the varnish that they put over the top of the painting to sort of seal the oils that they used. Um, and uh, gradually over time, it makes the colors look yellower and yellower. And um, there's actually some really interesting videos of uh, paint restorations where they remove the yellow varnish and you can see these much brighter colors underneath. Um, it's funny because at a certain point uh, people didn't know that that's why these old paintings had a yellow tinge to them and used to teach painting classes um, that they should put sort of yellowing over the top of their paintings on purpose to make it look like the old masters, um, which I just thought was funny because the old masters probably didn't want their paintings to be all yellow. Um, but anyway, the cool thing is that there's this thing called acetone gel now that you can rub all over the painting and uh, the yellow varnish will come off. Um, so you can see how they looked when they first came out. Um, and with this one, uh, and with the others, I'm, I'm a little lazy on the background. Um, I'm trying out the new Kyle T. Webster brushes that were added um, into Photoshop. He sold his company to Photoshop, so um, if you're one of the people who were wondering um, if they should get those brushes, if you have Photoshop, um, just update it and uh, it will have some of his brushes in there by default, including the inking thick and thin one, which I always use for my inking. So, um, With this one, I was using a blending brush in the background just to sort of get a sort of haze that kind of looks like the background. I was mostly focusing on the foreground because um, as a cartoonist, that's usually what I do. Um, and uh, I'm just sort of using, I'm not using straight up cell, shell, <laughs> cell shading <laughs> um, like I usually do. I'm trying to make it look a little more painterly just so that it looks a bit more like the actual painting. Um, I'm really trying to marry these two styles together. Um, and it was a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, having like straight up line art like I usually have and mixing it with this painterly style is surprisingly difficult. But there she is, my cartoon Mona Lisa, um, finished. Next up, I'm doing The Birth of Venus by Botticelli. This painting is also very, very famous, and you see it um, in our culture still to this day, all over the place. I think um, in lots of different TV shows and stuff, they'll imitate this pose or someone standing in a clamshell or whatever. Um, and uh, I thought this would be an interesting one to do because cartoon bodies are so different than the bodies that were drawn um, in Renaissance and uh, classical art. Uh, so I thought that would be interesting to see. Um, uh, I cut off a big part of the painting, actually. It's, it's quite a bit bigger than this, but um, I wanted to just focus on Venus in this particular one. Um, and yeah, you should probably look at the whole painting if you want, um, because it's like, it's a really cool painting and it has a lot of de weird details in it and stuff. Um, so this one was interesting. It's painted a little bit differently. It's actually a little bit closer to a cartoon than the Mona Lisa. It has line art um, a little bit and it also has a more shallow shading, I would call it, I guess. Um, it's not as like, uh, super rendered as the Mona Lisa was. Um, and as I'm drawing it, I'm just trying to get that facial expression in there. Um, I'm actually not a fan of the way that a lot of these paintings have um, female characters, and in fact, actually all of the figures in it um, don't have a lot of facial expression. They're always kind of like, not really, uh, 
they're not really making any real face in particular. Like, it's very, both the Mona Lisa and Venus in this painting, they have these very like neutral expressions and I guess you can kind of put whatever emotion you want onto them as a result, which kind of works, but um, that's one of the things I really love about cartoons. Um, they're usually very, very expressive when they're done right. So it was weird drawing these super exaggerated um, bodies and faces and then having to keep them relatively, uh, relatively blank and relatively uh, not as expressive, I guess. I was thinking about um, popping out her uh, uh, her posture so that she looks more like a cartoon character, but instead I decided to try to keep it as close as I could. Um, luckily for me, Venus has really, really long hair, which works well in cartoons. Um, and so uh, I was able to sort of make that work pretty easily. Um, and like I said, I just sort of did a rough background because um, I'm trying to focus on the figures here. Um, and uh, I'm trying to keep most of the colors the same. Uh, they're, they're a little more saturated in some places and a little less in others, but because um, I'm not directly sampling from the original painting. But um, I just do a light shade uh, after this to try to match the way that she's just lightly shaded in the original. And with that, she is basically done. It's so weird seeing her <laughs> in a cartoon style. It looks a lot more pinupy and strange just because of how um, cart how I exaggerate cartoons. So that was interesting and kind of makes me think about um, the style I developed. Last but not least is this self-portrait by Van Gogh. Um, I'm a huge fan of the way that Van Gogh painted. I thought it was really, I mean, it's really, it really stands out amongst all the um, most, I guess, famous painters. Um, it really is unique and um, quite, uh, I don't know, it has a good energy and lots of color, which I really appreciate. Um, his facial expression is kind of hard to capture. He looks sort of, um, well, not super happy for sure. Uh, there's sort of like an anxiety or a intensity about his face. Um, and it's interesting because I studied this painting pretty closely to try to replicate it and I couldn't find his eyebrows or where his hair starts um, because of the way that he paints. So um, a lot of that was just guesswork. Um, I think I made him look slightly more anxious than he does in the actual painting, but regardless, um, it was fun to draw Van Gogh. Um, it does make me sad to think about that um, his, you know, he was destined to become so famous after his death um, and he died in poverty, which is a real shame for someone who gets talked about so much in the current day and age. But it is really interesting how art can just um, not connect with people in the time that it's actually made and then connect with people a lot um, later on. Um, so I'm not directly sampling the colors here either, I'm just sort of estimating them. He obviously has this sort of gingery hair color and these bright yellow hat, and then I think green eyes? I wasn't really sure. I zoomed in as much as I could, but it's such a dark, desaturated color, I wasn't totally sure. Um, and then I had to do the background uh, very lovingly because, of course, this is an Impressionist painting with all that, um, all that lovely dashes of color. So I took an Impressionist brush and tried to start working in all of that. Um, and uh, again, this is a really interesting effect when you have clean line art like I do here. Um, oh, speaking of clean art, line art also, if you update your Photoshop, there's a, there's a line smoothing, which is really interesting. I haven't had access to line smoothing since I um, was like 14 and, and drawing in paint tool size, so um, that's something I'm experimenting with. I'm trying not to lose the roughness of my lines because that's sort of part of my style, but um, it is useful when you're drawing like super long curves and stuff that you don't want to be all uh, jaggedy. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I'm just roughing in all this texture and trying to make it look more like the way that he likes to paint. And uh, doing the same in the background. Obviously I don't want to leave it this flat digital gray. Um, and I'm just trying to work in all of that uh, movement and energy and color that you see in Van Gogh's paintings. Um, as this sort of comes to a close, um, I just want to say that this is a really fun exercise and I think you guys should try it out if you are a cartoonist or you draw in an anime style or anything like that. Um, first of all, it gave me a chance to look closer at all of these paintings that are so famous that I kind of glance over them these days, um, but uh, I really got to appreciate them closer because I was trying to replicate them. So um, that was really fun. And also it just makes you think about the style that you're using, um, comparing it to the old masters and stuff. 
Um, so yeah, uh, I highly recommend it if you guys would like to do it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, let me know what your favorite classical painting is. I will see you next week. Um, have a good day. Thank you to my patrons, including Blep, Code, Ellie Quiznack, Miss Misu, Christy Stewart, Paynamel, Elizabeth Albin, Kalpampon, Sergeant Pendulum, Lovely, Lachlan MD, Mystic, Vilka, Enzo Jobert, Yaboy ST, Adrian Delport, JJ, Laura Buter, Riley James, Superpixel, An Angela Taylor, Hallman Kearney, Blah 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 Blah, Addy Visual, and At Live Likes to Draw. If you would like to become a patron, there's a link on the end card. Thank you guys so much for your support, and I'll see you next week.